Madam Speaker. I call Ian McKelvey. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. It's, uh, um, it's a privilege for me to speak on a bill uh, that's come to the House, the Friendly Societies and Credit Unions Regulatory Improvements Amendment Bill, brought to the House by Stuart Smith. Uh, and I think it's, um, um, he's uh, fortunate to have drawn a bill out of the ballot, really, but it's also it's quite a complicated bill, actually, for a member's bill, and I congratulate him on the work he's done on it. It was an interesting process for me, as I knew little about uh, credit unions going into this, and I have to say I wasn't uh, part of the committee at the time the submissions were taken, so I've had to do a, um, a little study on my way through. But, uh, so I came into the deliberations a little later than most. But nonetheless, it was a very interesting process. I want to comment on a couple of co uh, comments that Jackie Dean made earlier in, this, um, in her speech on this. And, and when you think about New Zealand, mutuals, cooperatives and credit unions and building societies and that sort of uh, organisation are hugely important to New Zealand because I, I think our isolation from the rest of the world and, our, and probably our, uh, um, our lack of ability to, to protect ourselves from the big corporate world or the wider corporate world, this probably makes them even more important. When you think about uh, Jackie Dean's speech about the Deep South, well, I don't think she termed it like that, I would call it the Deep Dark South, but, um, but if you think about the great cooperatives in New Zealand, most of them originated in the Deep South. And so you think about uh, some of the bigger cooperatives like Ravensdown, PPCS, which is now Silverfern Farms, of course, the Alliance Group, Farmers Mutual Group, Farmlands, which Lawrence mightn't like, also uh, originated in the Outram Hotel. Uh, although it did originate also in, in uh, Hawke's Bay and Eskdale. But, um, so, so it's an interesting history that we have in New Zealand where, where we, we have this uh, history of protecting ourselves. And I think it, uh, the great thing about mutuals, cooperatives, uh, credit unions and things like that is it protects the members. And I think it was Gareth Hughes that mentioned the profits that the, that the international banks make out of New Zealand every year. When you think about a credit union, it retains all of that profit for the good of its members. And that's the critical uh, fact about those credit unions and the thing that I think is so important. And uh, I heard David Carter earlier mentioning the demutualisation of, of um, many of the big Australian mutuals. And um, there was some fear among the submitters that that was a possibility that could happen as a result of this bill. And when you think of, the, of, the, um, of companies like um, AMP in its old days, it was a mutual which held insurance policies basically for the good of its members. When it demutualised, all of that, uh, well, well not all of it, but a good deal of the money that originally was for the benefit of those policyholders went to the shareholders, who in some cases of course were the policyholders. But nonetheless it was very destructive and I think that we've learnt the lesson, the history teaches a lot of lessons and, and that's a particular lesson that I think we, we learnt the hard way. And, um, and I suppose if you think about many of our um, lines companies and smaller power companies in New Zealand, they were also shared am amongst um, which primarily were owned by, by local cooperatives. They were then effectively demutualised, the shares paid out, sold to big corporates, and we no longer own them either. So these organisations are most important to New Zealand, hugely important for New Zealand's, uh, to New Zealand's history. And I also think they have a very real place to play in New Zealand society. And so to see these... Uh, credit unions effectively given uh, the, the full powers of the banking community to act within reason and, and of course for the good of their members as a bank acts. It certainly gives them opportunity to grow the, the services they provide to those members and this, act, this bill also uh, I think gives, the, gives effectively the credit unions a personality which then enables them probably in a lot of cases to attract better people to operate them and perhaps even um, a better governance. And so I think that will also improve the service to those members. And, and obviously all the, uh, all the profit from those associations or members, the activities of those associations goes back to the members. So that's, that's really important for the, for the members of these credit unions as well. So I thought that, the, um, as I said, I came into this process late. It was very interesting to follow the process of the bill and to understand exactly where it's got the credit unions to. So I congratulate Stuart Smith uh, and the Select Committee, which I find, um, as Deborah Russell said, I think, quite collegial. I thought the, the discussions on this bill were very collegial and, and certainly worked well. So with those few words, I'm, I was pleased to be part of the process and I look forward to the bill progressing through the House and congratulate Stuart Smith, because I'm sure it's going to get the unanimous please. So thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Very good. <laughs> what was that? Madam Speaker. I call Tamati Coffee. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, stoked as ever to be taking a call on the friendly system.